Uh, right, ready. All right. So we said that programming is a C, a super code and algorithm is a precise set of steps used to solve any problem, right? And it's, it says at the end there that it must have a finite amount of steps. Finite meaning is that it has to come to a stop at some point. It can't go on forever. Meaning that if you if you are doing a set of steps, there must be a point where it's top and it's complete and you're satisfied that yes, the the the, 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 the problem is now solved or right? the situation is now rectified. It can't be continuously going on and on and on until the end of eternity. Right? That's not a pseudo code, that's that's in itself a problem. Right? So anything we're doing here, at some point it must have an end. It must have a stop, it must have a point where the program stops and you're satisfied and you move forward from there. All right? So we say here that it must be logically sequenced. Sequence meaning it must be put in the correct order. Just like if you're, if you're cooking chicken, you're frying chicken, and you're doing the steps to fry chicken, right? You must work in a particular set of order, set of sequence to make it happen, to make it turn out properly, right? You have, you have to take it out of the fridge. If it's frozen, you take it out of the fridge. Then you thaw it out. Then you cut it up if it don't cut up already, right? And clean it up. Then you season it. You wash understand? It. Yeah, clean it up. See it right. Clean it up. Wash it. Yeah, good. Right. Excuse so, me. all right, continue. Okay, so I can go continue. So after you season it up, sir, you, you make it go more in it, look, uh, and then you. Cut, um, after you do that, sir, you put on the oil, make the oil hot, then you um, make your flour to put it in, you dip it in the flour, you mix it up, sir, and then you put it in the pot. All right, wonderful. Yes, sir. You're going to teach you for cook, which is good. All right, so you see that the set of steps here are important, right? Because the, the thing is, if you miss one piece, it going to turn out, your outcome of your chicken going to turn out entirely different. For example, if you skip the thawed part and you just take it out of the fridge and start seasoning it up and everything, what's going to happen? It, the, the season just going to stay up on the top and it's not going to penetrate and the whole thing is going to tough. And if you move on to the next step, and you start cooking. Nothing is going to cook because it's frozen. So by the time the outside fried, the inside is still solid frozen, right? Because they miss one step. Or if you put it in the wrong order, if you take it out and then you season it and then you clean it, although the, the steps are there, if you put them in the wrong order, you're going to have an entirely different outcome, right? So the important thing with problem solving and programming is to have your steps and put them in the correct order because the correct order is going to determine the outcome that you have. And the outcome at the end of your program is going to determine whether or not the problem was solved. All right? So what we're going to be doing here today, we're just going to be doing, running through some of the common terms that we'll be using so that you have an appreciation for the terms and then we can go forward. All right, so we have a term here, a variable. This is a common term. You're, you're going to hear me say this very often. It's a common term. Variable, what is a variable, All right? On the notes here, so that variables are used to store information to be referred and manipulated in the computer program. They also provide a way of labeling data in a descriptive name so our program can understand them more clearly by the reader and, the, and ourselves, right? So a variable is pretty much a space in memory that we store data that we want to use, right? And we name it so that when we're worried to call on it, we can call on it. It will be similar to how you save names in your phone. You know, you save John, and you have a number, so when you're ready for John, you can call on John. You know, have to search for a bunch of numbers, one line, which one is John one, right? So that is how it works. So you save the space in memory. So if you look at the, 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 the five boxes that I have here, we can pretty much think of this as some storage location in memory, right? And I, right here, I have saved five variables. Right, item number is one variable, description is one variable, price is one variable, quantity is one, and total is one. Right, and these are the storage space in memory. So, anytime I call upon item number, the computer is going to know that I am referring to this data 
in here. So when I call upon the description, the computer is going to know that I'm calling upon this data. And the data can change from time to time. As you go on, you can change it. That's why it's called a variable, because the data can change as you go. Right? It's not fixed. So what is shoes, Nike shoes here, so as the program goes, I might change the description to Clark's or something else, depending on what the program is doing. You understand? So the data may change. So we create variables to store data as we go. And then as it needs, as we need to, we can change the, change the type of data that the variable is storing. All right? And it says here, the variable above can be considered to be a storage location in memory. Each box holds a specific piece of data and is identified by a given variable name. So the variable names are the item number, description, price, quantity, and total, right? That are the variable name. The data that it is storing would be like the NK1245, or the Nike shoes, or the 7500, or the quantity, or the two, or the quantity. That would be the data that the variable is storing. Good. Data in a variable can be erased and updated as needed. So you see the one for total here says empty because no calculation was done to put any data in the area. So the variable can be empty. Most times we're starting off a variable, we can start it as zero. We assign it as zero just because we want to start off with something in it. Right? That is good practice. Something you can leave it blank if you don't want anything in it. Right? Each variable can hold a specific data type. So I'm right here, so. Each variable can hold a specific data type. Data type refer to exactly like what it's shown, the type of data that the variable can store. And this is important. So we have to specify what kind of data we want each variable to store, right? So here, so we have four main types of data types, right? Now we can, we can think of it here. We can see it in database. We can see it in spreadsheet as well. But specifically here, it's pointed out like this. So we have a string. String is used for a combination of characters that appear on a keyboard. So any words or symbols or numbers on a keyboard that you see that can be referred to as a string. So a collection of these characters will be a string. So for example, I store NK1245 here. So that can be a string because that is a combination of characters and numbers or symbols. So that would be a string, right? A character is a single letter out of the alphabet, right? A single letter. Like if you have, for example, if you have a, a Y only, this would be a character. Y only would be a character. Y-E-S would be a string. You get that? Y alone is a character. Y-E-S would be a string. So a character is a single letter. A string is a combination of two or more letters, numbers, and symbols, right? Bear that in mind. An integer, and you're supposed to know this from maths, an integer is a whole number. Whole number meaning that you can't have any pieces of it. It's not the one number. You can't have 2.5 or 2.5 or 2.25 with an integer. It's a whole number. So it has to be 2, 3, 4, that kind of thing, all right? And then the, the, the next side is that there are real numbers. And real numbers can contain decimal points or fractions. So if you have a situation where you're storing a, 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 a value that has decimals or fractions in it, that will be declared as real. If you have a situation where you're using data that is number only, that will be declared as integer, whole number, without any pieces or any fraction that will be referred to as an integer. And it's important that you remember this item because as we move through pseudocode, each time we use a variable, we have to declare what kind of data we want this variable to store, right? So for example, up here, if we look at this one, item number, we said that this one will be a string because it's a combination of letters and numbers collection. A description will also be a string because that is Nike shoes, two or more letters and numbers and symbols that will be Nike shoes. Look at price. What kind of data type would price be? To you, uh, who am I asking? Real. 
it would be real, right? Because you see it have 0 0.50. So 0 0.50 means that it's a decimal point or a fraction at our, if you convert it. So quantity now would be what? Integer. 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 Good. Because you can't have 2.5 shoes. That means you cut one of the shoes in half. Right? So some things you can... Some things when it comes to quantity, you know, depends on the units that you're using. So if you, if you like weighing something, if you have flour, you can have 2.2 .2 pounds. You understand? But if it's some item that will have to be a whole, like if you're buying a fan, you can have 2.2 .2 fan. That has to be a whole. So that would have to be a integer. But if you're using something like, I'm going to say weighing flour, 2.5 pounds of flour, that you can declare as real. So you have to determine that based on the type of data that you know you want to store, right? Because if you do it wrong, if you don't do it properly, you might get errors. Or you will get errors, right? And it might make your program not run properly. All right. Moving on. So we're good with this part. We're good with identifying types of variables. So if I give you a set of variables down the line and I say, tell me what type of data type this is, will you be able to, to correctly put it in if I say um, the number of cars in a parking lot that would be what? Real or integer? The number of cars in a parking lot that would be real or integer? Integer. Integer. Good. Because you can have two and a half car. Well, you can, but it's not a car anymore. It's a scrap. Alright? So good. Alright. Moving on. And we can now note that variables can interact with other variables. And this is the, the word part will make the world thing get interesting. Now, variables can interact with other variables to produce new or updated data. Right? So in the case above, where you had to get the total, the variable price and quantity would have been manipulated. So you say, when we leave this here so empty. For the price, no, the I can interact with these two variables right here. So to get the total, so I can say seven thousand five hundred times two, and this will give us the total, right? If we're using the raw data, but bear in mind when it comes to programming, once we have the data stored, we don't need to use the raw data anymore. So in this case, I can say, or I should say, price times quantity, right? So if I run this as a program, it's going to look for price. It's going to ask me, what is price? Price is right here, so, so it's going to know that it's going to use this data. What is quantity? Quantity is right here, so, so I can use this data. So this cell will be now equal to 7,500, 7,500, 15,100, 15, I think. All right? So that will be the total. But if I go in the, suppose I go in the, I go to quantity and I change the value for the variable quantity and I change it to one, this will automatically change to 7,500. It all depends on the data that we're using and the data that you type and the data that is stored. Now, importantly, look at this. Remember, I tell you that two data have to be the same type to interact, right? So suppose I come here and I say, ice times Price time description. What would be the answer here, sir? What would be the answer for price time description? Come now, people. How do I talk to? Don't remember to call me. You know, price time description. What would be the answer here, sir? That number 
you're not going to get an answer. You'll get an error as a matter of fact because you're, you're trying to multiply 7,500 times Nike shoe. So you'll get an error for that. You'll get a syntax error or some sort of calculation error or something like that. No, it won't be a syntax error. It'll be a calculation error, right? So we, we have to use the correct data type, especially when we're using formulas or calculations. So right here, so we can see that we can multiply price times quantity because they are similar data types, right? But when it comes to string, you can multiply string by a number, right? So we have to bear that in mind. So as you start doing your programming, when you start getting errors, these are some of the things that you need to look for. You need to look for what, how did I declare my data? Is that creating a problem? How am I declaring my data? Because if you have something as a number, you can use it with something that is text or whatever the case is, all right? Remember these things. Yes, Okan. Sir, so like um the description, sir, or you can do string times character, sir, because that would also be an error. You can't say string times anything, because that's a letters. You can't say letters times anything. You can multiply the alphabet by the alphabet. That's a maths or something like that. Well, that's a maths right, right, so, right? So we can't say a shoes. We can say a shoes times Nike shoes here, so times two. Even though logical now, ahead it makes sense. But uh, to the computer, that doesn't make no sense. That would be a number times a number. You understand? A number minus a number plus a number. As we go forward, you will get more examples so you'll see it more clearly. All right? Input statements now. And I should point out to you that well, as we continue here, so today you're going to need a book and paper and pencil and them stuff there because we're going to write some notes and we're going to do some work to make sure you have that on, in hand. All right? All right, so what does input do? The input statement is used to get data from outside the computer via some input device into a variable for manipulation. So you get data from the user. So for example, when the computer, when you're doing some, something on the computer and you want to, you, you close the program and you don't see everything, you see a message coming up asking, do you want to save your program? And you enter, you press Y for yes, that is an input. You are inputting Y into the computer. The computer store that into a variable and then manipulate it by saying, oh, the person wanted to save, let me save. You understand? So any data that is coming from outside the computer by the user into the computer. So when you type anything into the program, that is inputting. If you enter a number, if you enter a name, if you enter a quantity into the program, those are inputs. So at a time, the program needs input to know what to do. So the program will know, the program going to know exactly how to calculate the total, but it don't have the amount of shoes or the price. So you have to provide the price. So you might have to provide type in four for the quantity or 1,000 for the price. And then the computer going to say, okay, 4,500 for your total or whatever the case is. So any information that we have to put into the computer, that will be the input, right? And here they have three, Keywords that are usually used for input. Input, the word input, read, or accept. So anywhere in a Sula code where you see these terms, input, read, or accept, it's referring to inputting data into the program. All right? For our purposes, for our purposes, we are just going to use input. So every time we're writing a program, Sula code for now, we're going to use input. But bear in mind, if you see a past paper or a textbook or something that says read, are accept, they are all referring to input, same way, all right? So we have an example question here, so a sample question. Write a pseudo code to read in two numbers into a variable A and B. Let me repeat that. Write a pseudo code to read two numbers into a variable A and B, right? So A is one variable, B is one variable. Remember before it says you can name it description or cost or total or whatever. You can name it anything. In this case, this variable here is just called A and one is called B, right? Simple, don't worry about it. So this is the beginning of the program. Begin with a begin, end with a end. So this show that the, pro, the pseudocode starts here and it ends here, right? Important key terms to put in when you're doing codes, right? 
And then the, 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 the code that we're putting is simple. Input A, right? Two numbers into the variable A and B. So input A will allow us to input a value into A. Input B would allow us to put a value into B. And that's pretty much how it works. You just input, your keyword input, and the variable that you want to store the value in. All right? We could have taken this a step further. We could have declared the type of data that we want. So we can say the variable want to store A and B as real. We could have done this. All right? For some purposes, especially when it comes to CXC, I realize that for some teachers, they don't think it's important to put in the variable type in the SUDA code. In the program, definitely but not in the SUDA code. And for other teachers, they might think it very important that you put in the variable type when you're working with SUDA code. Personally, I like when it's there because it shows you exactly what kind of data you're working with. So for our purposes, we're going to practice to put them in when we do them, all right? Some of the content sheet that I have don't have it, but as we go through, I'm going to try to drop them in just so we know where we are. So in this case, A and B are real, meaning that there are two numbers right bear in mind this question didn't specify if it's real number or integer number it didn't specify important to note so in this case you can make your own assumption you can put it if it's real or you can put it if it's integer for integer you cannot say int right in a case where they say if if, if this question were changed and it and it says write a pseudo code to read two To prices, we know that price have decimal points. So once it's a price and decimal point, then we will know that it must be real. You get that? If I said write a solar code to enter to to age, could that age be real? Somebody tell me. Can an age be real of type real? Um, sir, yes, um, sir. No, sir, um, some people may say like they are 12 and a half or so, but not really. People don't really use it. Good. So there is no there is nothing that says that 12 and a half in a sense. You can't be 12, you don't yes, put that on any form or any document or anything. You see, they are 12, they are 13. I cannot be 12.25 and I cannot be 12 by 11, 12 or something like that. It can be any fraction of an age. In in reality, yes, because you have lived past your 12th birthday. But in representation, you can't say 12.5 or 12.2, right? So in that case, age here so will have to be a whole number. It'll have to be integer, right? You get that? And then, so that is the kind of reasoning you have to put into when you're declaring your variables. Because how you declare a variable, you have to think about the type of data that you're going to be storing in the variable. And that will determine if it's real or integer string or char. You understand? So, bear that in mind. And then the rest of it just says input A, input B. This part here, so, is just explanation. This is not part of the code. And this part, this is just explanation. So, when you read it, you understand. It's used to input value into the variable called B. Right? That is just explanation. The code is going to be begin that to that, input A, input B, and end. Right for this question, and then this can be a CXC question because this is part of a CXC question. I mean, CXC question like on your part on your on your exam paper that you're going to get based on past papers that you that I have seen before. This can be a piece of a question. It might say write a pseudo code to read two age into a variable A and B, and then this will be your answer without the explanation here. So this will be your answer. Begin. You declare your variables. Input A. Input B and your end. You input A and B because you put input A and B because they gave you the names A and B, right? In a situation that they didn't give you A and B, let's suppose them just say read two age into variables. Full stop. In this case, you can use your own variable name. Me say you have to make up your own variable name. So you could have said 
you could have called it one page one is one the other one is two that would be perfectly fine somebody have on the microphone and i'll be sure it's happening to you unless you answer a question all right so in this case looking at the question but change the question so you say write a pseudo quote to read in two age into variables all right so that would mean that I am just creating age one, age two, and I'm inputting age one and age two. If it said, write a school of code to enter anything, you can make up your own variable name. Bear in mind, your variable names must be logical. It must make sense. You want your variable name to represent the type of data that you're storing. So in this case, I am storing age, so I call it age one, age two, right? I wouldn't, if, if this question were saying, Read that you read, read a pseudo code, write a pseudo code to read two age into a variable, and I name this I name the first one something like that, and I name the second one something like that. The variable name here so and here so will work, you know. It just that it don't make no sense. It's not a, it's not logical. So I am being a programmer. When I look back at this program, I am not going to know. What what me this say? What was QWEW one again? What was SSWDW two again? I am not going to remember that. You understand? And anybody, suppose you you get fired or you move on from the job, and somebody else have to look over the programs that you were writing. When they look at this, they are not going to know what where you where, where the name QWEW one or whatever the case is. So it makes sense to name your variables logically so that you can know. So anybody looking at this, you know that. Age one and age two must be referring to two different age that you are trying to use. All right. In addition to that, when you're naming an age, it has to be if when you're naming a variable, it has to be one word. Like when we put the a, the one and the age together here, so to make one word. So you couldn't do that. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it out here. So proper variable name. So you couldn't have age one with a space right this space right here so we give you an error it has to be one continuous word so if you want to join it you put it immediately beside it or you put an underscore like that right so you can have this couldn't be a variable name because this is two different words you either have to join it like this or you put something to separate it like an underscore okay right? and anyway how you use it when you declare it up here son you would have to continue using it the same way throughout the rest of the program so like when we have age one like when i have age one and age two years so i couldn't go down here and decide that i want to use it as age dash one age dash two right because age one and age one with a dash and age one, beside itself like that, are two different variables. You get that? And yet, some of you might even see this same situation when you're doing your SBA. Because I don't name something MOE, and then somewhere else you refer to M.O.E. That different something that the data have to be identical. You understand? So, if you name, or if you declare a variable in the variable part of here, so ensure that you're using it the same way as you go through. All right? And here's our next example. Question two, write a pseudo code to accept the variables month, year, and date. All right? And we're going to put in the variable part. So we want to say variable. And it, now it depends on how you're going to store your data. Now, because if you store a month as 0, 1, or 0, 8, or 0, 9, then you can use an integer. Well, if you store a month as January, February, March, then you have to store it as a string. You get that? So now it, it's important to know how you're going to store your data here. So, so if, if I'm storing it as January, February, March, then month can be string. Right? But if I'm storing it as 01 for January, or 02 for February, or 03 for March going on, then I can name it as... 
integer. So month could be integer. Mercy. Month, year can be integer. And day can be integer. Should be there. Right? Because all of them could be. So, so the year can be 2001, 2002. That's a number. The month will be 0, 01 or 0, 02. That's a number. And the day would be 01 to, to, to 31st and 28, whatever the case is. That's also a number. So it could be stored as this. Then you say input month, input day, input date, uh, month, year, date. Sorry. All right, so you would have the end here. And you begin here. Good. I'm going to push through. I'm just going to push through the sickle path and I'm going to take a shot. 30 second breath, breather, and then we move forward. All right. Next, we want to do, we want to assign the assign statement is when you give a variable a value. Remember, before we said that we can input a value. So we could input a price or input a, a value into a variable. In some cases, we want to store the value internally on the program itself. So in that case, we can assign a value. Or when we're doing a, a calculation, we can assign the value from a calculation to a variable. Right? So look at this question here. Question three. Write a, a sign statement to store the value 3090 into the variable A. 3090 is stored into A. This is all you'd write it. So the L value is the variable. We're going to read all of this right here. So that's what it's explaining. The L value is the variable, and the R value is what you're storing in the variable. So the L value here is the name of the variable that you're using. L value means left value, left value. R value means right value. So the L value is a variable that you're storing the data in. L value. The R value is what you want to store into the variable. So in this case, it's 3090. It could have been a number like this, or it could have been a, 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 a calculation, something like that. Could have been stored. So the, to the result of 3090 plus 23 would have been stored in A. Right, you could have also used an next variable, so A could have been B plus C. As long as all of these are the same data type, so as long as this is a number, then you can have a number plus a number and store it in here. So, right, but if this is a string, if A is a string and then B and C are numbers then it get kind of complicated because sometimes it may work, sometimes it may not work, depending on the type of calculation that you're doing. So for safe programming purposes, make sure that your data types are always the same when you're doing something like this. So make sure that A is real, and B is real, and C is real, or A is an integer, B is an integer, C is an integer, all right? So whatever the case is, you can assign a value to a variable like this, all right? So the variable name that, it, that is going to get the value is always going to be on the left side. And what is going to be stored will always be on the right side. So that's why you have the L value and the R value. And in any math, in, in, in calculations, in calculations in pseudocode, we use these symbols here, right? So we use the asterisk for multiplication Slash for division, regular plus for addition, regular minus sign for subtraction, right? So anyway, we're using a calculation in pseudo code. So for example, for multiplication, multiplication we you wouldn't use the X for multiplication. We use an asterisk, right? So remember that. Here we have our next, number, our next question. Question four. Write a pseudo code to read two numbers, read two numbers and find their sum. So here's what we're reading two numbers. Let me just highlight that. Not that. We're reading two numbers and then we're finding the sum. A lot of times you have to read the, the, the question to know exactly what they want to, they're asking you. 
So we're reading two numbers. In this case, we're calling the two numbers A and B. So this is A, this is B for the two numbers. We could have called it num1 and num2. It doesn't really make a difference. But in this case, let us call it A and B. So here they have assigned a value 0 to A and 0 to B. This is just to start the program, right? This is just to make sure that when they declare it, we don't have a blank variable. Just like what we do when we're doing the total up here, so where total started started off empty. Sometimes we don't want to do that. We want it to have a, a figure when it started. So we assign zero to A and B, right? Then we input, because it says read two numbers. So we know that we're inputting A and we're inputting B for the two numbers. And then we're finding their sum, sum equal A plus B. That is finding the sum. So if you are in CXC, if you are doing your exam and you saw a question like this, this can, this can be an entire CXC question. This could have been one of the questions. Read a pseudo, write a pseudocode to read two numbers and find your sum. All you need to write is this. So you wouldn't write this part because all of this part here, so is the explanation. All you need to write is this middle part. A equals 0, B equals 0, input A, input B, sub equal A plus B. That would be your answer. And your begin and your end. Right? As I said, for my purposes, I like to put in the variable part. So I would say var A and B, and I would just put those as real. And this would be an answer. So you don't have to, uh, for exam purposes, you wouldn't have to put in the assign and these statements on the left hand side. And you wouldn't have to put in the words that you see on the right hand side. You don't want to put in this part A equals zero, B equals zero, input A, input B. Sum equal A plus B and your end. And that would be the answer for this one. All right. Uh, what else do we have to do? All right. So we're going to look at the output statement and then we give some questions to look at. The output statement now is where you're going to display whatever takes place on the computer. At the end of the day, it makes no sense if it's still on the computer, right? It has to be outputted to the user. On a, on a paper printed or on a screen, which is displaying what you're doing, right? That's the point of the output. Output to show the user what is happening, what has processed, what information has taken place, whatever the case is. So we use an output statement to get all of that out to the user, right? And say, we'll print another following circumstance. So when we say, Output. I should have had this part here. So anyway, let's see. <clears throat> Sorry. Output. Print. And display. All of these are referring to output. All of these are output statements. So any program that you're looking in, and you see it's an output, it's an output statement. If it's a print, it's still an output statement. If it's a display, it's still an output statement. So you see like down here, sir. I have print total here, sir. It is still referring to output. All right, so bear that in mind. So let's look at this example. We are trying to output some information. And at the blue part here, so it'd be like a computer screen where the data is being outputted. So we say, if total is equal to 1,200, that is a value. We're storing the value 1,200 into the variable called total. We can say print total. When it's in quotation, when it's in double quotation like this, the program is going to print what is being displayed inside the quotation exactly as it is. Right? So in this case, T-O-T-A-L, total, is being displayed inside the quotation. So on the computer, it will be displayed exactly the same. T O T A L, right? Let me show you a different example. Look here, so now total equal one thousand two hundred. Same thing, but here, so now I'm saying to print 
total without the quotation. So without the quotation, the computer is going to look for a value of a total. With the quotation, it's going to just print it as it is. So total with the quotation will be printed as exactly as it appears within the quotation. Total without the quotation, the computer is going to look for a value of for total. And here, so we have a value for total. So if it's a print total, it's going to print the value for total, right? So that is important to look at, you know. Printing with quotation is like printing a message. So I, this could have, if, if, if I said in here, so total is, no, let me not do that, let me say, your total is with the quotation, it's going to look for, it's going to display your total is exactly as it appears within the, the, the quotation. In this case, as I said, there is no quotation. So the computer is going to look for total. In this case, you have a value called total here. So, so it's going to display 1,200. If I were to do this, if I said total equal 1,200, and I said print average, the computer is going to be looking for average or value for average. There is no value for average based on what I have up here. So, so this will give me an error, right? So the computer here is going to be looking for a value, an exact value for what is being displayed. So in this case, if it's average, it don't see any average up here, so, so you'll get an error. If I were to put back the total, it will see that here is a total with a value and it will display the value. You understand? And I can take it a step further. Right? So here we have both of them combined, combined now. So this is total in the quotation and total without the quotation. And the computer is going to treat it the same way. So total in the quotation is going to be printed as is. Total outside of the quotation, the computer is going to look for total up here, so 1,200, and this place. So you're going to say total 1,200. Or you could say... Your total is, and then because that is in the quotation, in the display, it is to say your total is just like this. All right? These are some of the things that you need to bear in mind. We're going to get more into it as we go so you get more understanding, but just make sure you see you, you have an appreciation and you see how it is working here. All right? Mm. All right. In your notebook now, in your notebook that you have at your house, that you have in front of you right now, do number four. Do number four in your notebook right here, so for all of these 10 variable names that I have here, so. All right, the number four in your. We're going to give you one minute to do that. The so other number four. Yeah, that's what that, that's what that the is the one string character. No, that's it. Yeah, based on the data type, yeah.
All right. It's supposed to finish by now. Who's next to that? All right. Ready? All right. So the question says, give the correct data types for each of the following pieces of data. Now, bear in mind what I said before. Now, you have to think about what is data, the type of data is going to look like. And then based on that, we know that how that data will be stored. So let's see if we can answer these now. So for something like name, example for name will be Kevin. What kind of data type would this be? Um, string. string. Address would be what? String. That would be an sure, example. So. Address? No, man, string. String, sir, because, because you have a combination um, of numbers. Right, you have a combination of letters, numbers, two or more letters and numbers. Age would be what? Int um, integer. Integer, right? Why not real? Um, sir, because uh, uh, real, you know, decimal. Sir, decimal point and uh, and right. it's an old number. Right. So we use in. Good. Um, a math score. Sir, sir, um, me sir, real, but it couldn't be also integer based on. Sir, it depends, sir. For some reason, I'm thinking of my depends. Yeah, but, um, the most, that is okay, so, so you can, so you can, most time, most time you can get old numbers for, for grades when they're grading, but for, no, not most time, sometimes, but for the most part, we usually put it in a real because you can have a 50.5 or something like that. All right, so I would say, I will for part that or not, turn off like a mic. It's 50, then it is. is 50.5 then it is 50 .5 real good all right yes sir um same thing for mass total if it's height what about height um, yeah. sir, real? Sir, because real. then you can see a five, um, five, five foot two or five up. foot six or whatever the case Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I also like this flat, um, five feet. Right. What about quantity? Sir, integer, sir. I'm going to put integer. I would say integer. But it, again, it depends on the type of data you're using. So because I said... If you're thinking of some type of things, you can't you can have a real, it might be two and a half or whatever the case. But for most times, when you think of quantity, you're referring to whole numbers, all right? Average grade score, we know that I What about yes, goals? Goals scored. Goals scored. Um, Goal. um, integer. Integer. Right, because you can have two and a half goals. A speed can be real, because you can have... Real. Yeah, can 23 have 55, 5, man. 5, 4, 5. Uh, whatever the case is. All right? So you it's know good. about the average grade score, sir? It should have been the same thing like the maths one over there, sir. So it could have been more than like a real. Because when you get it average, you start getting a decimal point. So some more than like this should have been real. Yes, sir. All right? So we, we, we feel like we have an understanding of that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Um, Tiana. 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 I can put on the phone and go on. All right. Come away. Come away. People, in a minute, I'm going put on the phone and walk down. Now, you are loose from this, you know. You're missing any of this, but you're not listening. It's not benefiting you. Oh, can I say our microphone is not working? 
All right, we'll accept that for today. Ah, uh, Kalium. Kalium, yes, you're, yes, you're on the fan. What we do so far? You're following out. What we doing so far? Yes, very much. Still need to practice it a little bit. Very much. Still need very much practice. But yes, man, I understand. Janelle. Yes, sir. Are you understanding what we're doing so far? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Aisha. Aisha. Aisha, no answer. But now I ask on you, sir. I was on you, sir. I was on you, sir. Everything. All right. Sir. Oh, sorry, I understand. You understand? Yes, sir. I know that you always understand. No, sir, but I'm here. Oh, the end of that, I can't wait. I'm going to pay attention, sir. Me, me Remember, some of that woman or some of that distraction. I distraction. Oh, so when you come to school, they have distraction. All right, not getting into that one. All right. Yes, sir. All right, good. So we we'll cover this. So now let us get into the deeper part of it. So I'm going to stop this one. I'm going to open another one. All right. Here now, we have questions working with the same concept of input output and storage input uh, input um output and assignment right working with the same concept but no we want to be able to can look at our problem statement our pseudocode and we want to be able to break up the pseudocode based on what we know input is supposed to be output is supposed to be and assign is supposed Sorry, to be can zoom it up a little bit more please your, 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 your phone your phone to post can pinch and zoom. Yeah. Okay. So it's a laptop may I use. But you can pinch and zoom to your phone and zoom top. All right. Good. So you can zoom in on the exact part that you want to look at. All right. So we're starting with question one. So the, the, the objective here for this is to down here, so we have IPO. This is an IPO chart, right? It stands for input. Processing and output. What we do with the IPO, IPO chart is we break up a pseudo code. So this is a pseudo code. This is a problem statement. We break up a problem statement into pieces and put it into the categories of whether it's input, processing, or output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to guide you through. We're going to create a pseudo code from this problem statement. This is a problem statement. So we're going to create some basic pseudocode from the problem statement, and then we're going to put it into pieces into the IPO chart down below. All right? So this question first says, write an algorithm to accept two numbers. And there are some key terms that you need to remember. Now. When you start looking at these, you're going to realize that you see some key terms. You're going to see some things repeating over and over. Bear in mind, pseudocode, problem-solving programming, it's doing the same thing over and over. It's not any new groundbreaking thing you're doing every time. So if you understand how to do the B6 foundation, you will understand how to do any question that come, right? The main important thing is to understand the foundation, right? So right away we're seeing accept two numbers. You will learn from example and from practice that anyway, say accept two numbers is really mean input two numbers. That's what it's saying. Anyway, say accept two numbers. It meaning input two numbers, right? So down here, so we want to say let's not do like that. Let's do the variable part first. We want to put in the variables. Now we can. It's an input two numbers. We can name it A and B, as I said before. But just to name, give it proper naming protocol. We're going to name this num one and num two. So these are the two variables that we're going to be using. And we can just call them integers, right? 
it never specifies the type of data, but we will, but from us, it, sorry, from us, the average year, so, sorry, wrong one. From us, the average, you know, so, you're going to have some sort of decimal. When you calculate average, most of you end up with a decimal. So, when you say average, just assume that it's going to be real, all right? So, these are the two names I will give it. It's a, accept two numbers, these are the two numbers, the names I will give it, the two variables. So, these are the two variables. Num1, then one variable, num2, is another variable. Good. And then we can say input num1 input num2 so that is covering this part. Accept two numbers input num1 and num2. So that accept two numbers. These are the two numbers that we will accept. Input number one, input number two. And next it says and calculate your total and your average. And from us we're calculating, we know that. So we're going to put in for the total is going to be number one plus Num two. The average is going to be where well, you calculate average. Where well, you calculate average, somebody. Can be num one um all and num two. So now you have a wagon. And I hear a car, yeah, break up bad. All right, let me just do it. It will be the total divided by two. Divide by two because I have two numbers you have here, so number one and number two. So it will be two. And then that will be your, your, your average. All right. So, this is the question. I write an algorithm to accept two numbers. Here we have it, num1 and num2, and calculate their total and have average. Here we have it, total and the average. So, this right here will be the entire pseudocode for this question right here. So, All right? And now we put what refers to input in the input side, what refers to processing in the processing side, and what refers to output in the output side. So your inputs will be these. And your processing will be these. In this case, we don't have any output because it never asks us to output anything or display anything. So we don't have any output. But this is pretty much it. This would be the question. So that be the pseudo code. So um, if we did have the output, it would be um, what would process like the total average. If it is something like if I right, let me so look at this. I'm gonna add the next part. If it said the display the average and the total. Let me smile about it. So display the average and the total. Then it said display the average and the total at the end. So down here, so I would say I would say this output average and the total. I don't put that in two different lines, so that is clear. So 
So if I added this statement in it, display the average and the total, then I would output the average, output the total, and I will put them in the output part like this one. So this would be a complete question, right? So if you went into CXC and CXC, you say, all right, write an algorithm to do this, and then complete the IPO chart below. This would be an algorithm. This would be an IPO chart. The IPO chart, but it'll break down what is in the algorithm and put in the appropriate place. All right? So look at it. Take a moment and look at it. Write it off. Do not screenshot it, because that is the highest laziness. Write it off. Get a pen, your book, write it off. All right. All right. Ready to move on? No, sir. I might not be. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Anybody else still writing? Yes, sir. We can move on then. Yes, sir. All right. So let me move on. All right. So remember the same concepts are working with, right? You're going to see some of the same terms repeating. So when you see the same terms, it's the same principles that would apply. All right. I'll just the more more practice we do with this, the easier it will become. Let's move on to question two. All right, at this point, I got us your permission. Go ahead and screenshot that, take a picture for this purpose. Normally, I like when I write stuff because it, it, it enforces what you're doing, but in, in the case of this, we have time again, so just screenshot it and we'll move on. All right, question two. Write an algorithm to accept three numbers, A, B, C, and find their sum as D and the average as A, B, G. All right, look at this now. See if you can identify the pieces on your own first. Write an algorithm to accept three numbers, A, B, C, and find their sum as D and the average as A, B, G. Interesting question here. Let's sir, go. first, sir, this is variable, sir. Get out of what? This is variable. All right, so in this case, it's a accept three numbers, A, B, and C. So in this case, they gave you the names of the variables. So it's not like the first one where I name my number one and number two. In this case, they give you the name. They tell us they want to name A, B, and C. So A, B, and C. All right. Next. In sir, I will know that to them. In input A, sir. Input B. Input C. Input C. Good. Good. And then in you know, the last part here, so it says find your sum as D and the average as average. So, so you would have sum 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 equal sum sum equal, equal what? Equal um A plus B B plus C plus C Good. And their average. And then move on to average. 
Apa jenis warna? Um, sir, the, um, the variable, um, the sum divided yeah. by, um, three. Two. Hmm? Sir, the, um, sum, the sum divided, divided by, by two. Three. Be- sir, I'm going to answer three because a three number it's it. A three yeah, number. Three. All right. So yes, there's sir. one error. There's one error in this. Who can identify the error? Sir, the sum should save us D. Wonderful. Good. Good. Sum should be D. Because you say, say find your sum as D. All right? So the sum should be D. That is it. So for this now, it should be your input. Input. It should be your processing. Processing. And there is no output. So this should just finish as it is. Okay, yes, sir. Maybe this is an exam question and you do this exactly as it is. You'll get full marks for this because you have, you have completed everything here. Let me find another one. That easy. That easy. All right, try number six on your own. All right, check. Everybody, if you try it, you know, get your, your book and try it. Don't wait for the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, as you get it, when you do it, when you write it in your book, just send a picture to me at the same time. WhatsApp a picture of your answer to me at the same time. Everybody. I mean, I see the answer community now. I'm supposed to move fast, you know. So I'm send a man check. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah, that's correct. We have correct. Who else? Come All right. on. All right, sir. Yeah, man, it's correct. You're correct.
day that you have the, the you have the total part is correct, but the input part is not correct. You're not putting a variable name for the input. And you're not putting a variable name for the var part up at the top. You know, so one, two, three. I see. Sorry, I understand mine, but I'm not so sure. Yes, yes, it's correct, um, general. So I only said that now, Janelle. Uh, I input it on the IPO, IPO chart. Uh. Yeah, man, put it on the IPO chart. Oh, sorry, I never do that. I never do that now. Come away, Odin, Princess, Tiana. Oh, my sister. I don't know. I want to phone on to you. I want to marry you. Tiana, I want to see yours too. Sir, I don't have a phone. Hmm? Sir, I don't have a phone. And my cousin is losing her at the moment. So what are you watching me on? Sir? My tablet, sir, but it doesn't have anything on it. So, yeah. So, you want to treat your email, sir? No, I'm going to do better than that. I'm going to make a turn. Okay, sir. All right. Princess. That is Princess talking, right? Yes, sir. All right. So, what the first part? I'm right here, sir. So, you'll find the verbal term, sir, which is price one, price two, and price three. This is correct? Yes, sir. We'll find it good enough. This correct? Oh. Hmm? She missed out the... Uh, she missed out the real. All right. So, let me let me tell you this. Let me just do this for now. You see, you know, somebody is simple. Yeah, one, so yeah, yeah, me see. You know, some of these simpler ones over the way, now nah, it's hard to determine that real or integer. We just I'll leave off the real or integer part. But no, but no. All right, because I can't have to determine, but the important thing is to make sure you put in the variables that you are going to use. And I'm going to leave off something for one of them. Yes, I'm going to leave off something for one. I need to correct something. All right, so we have this. Princess, look at this. You can't have a space here, so that's why I'm going to ask you for sure say correct. The price one, after drying out. So you couldn't have a space here, so. All right? What's the next part? Princess. So input price one. All right, that? Yes, sir. Input price. All right. What's next? Sir, sir, semicolon. I forgot to put any of them, sir. Yeah, yeah, you're correct. All right. What's next? Print. Sir, price two plus price three. So price two plus price three. Say that is incorrect. Well, I know, man. Well, I know, can I make sure you get it? Something missing from this. What's supposed to be on this? Sir, so total. Total. Good. All right. So, this will be the answer for that part. So, we cannot put this down here. So, All right, good. So one thing that I that I was leaving off a while ago, right? Look at these variables: price one, price two, price three. That we have declared up here. So any other variable that we're going to be using in here, so we have to declare them as well. So it's like this total right here, so that we're using here, so it should also be declared. 
I forgot to point that out earlier. All right. So I'm going to go back to some of the previous ones. So for this one, it should have average total and total. An average up here. So. See that? so please go through the whatever you wrote down and uh, add in those there. So any other variable that we use in the program should be declared up here. So, so for this one, it should have B and A B G. Good. So make sure you have that. Make sure you make those corrections. All right. Ten second break, and I will go again. All right, try this one. So try this one in your books now, everybody. Let's see how we can run through this now. So we're starting off with our variables, price, and rate. And based on the fact that we're using price and rate, we know that these are real. Uh, okay. huh? Cost. So I want to include um, cost. Find cost, which is, yes, yes. All right, that's what I think. That is good. So you're going to input um price price and rate. Mm -hmm. All right. So you can put this in one statement like this. Um, or you can put it hmm? um you could write it like you have input price and input rate. Yeah, could I write yeah, them separate? Means. You can input price and input rate. No matter how far. Yeah, do that. Because that's the right way to do it. I just sometimes like chart Yes, sir. So, do the right way. Price and rates. And then next we say we're calculating the cost, which is. Cost equal. Mm hmm. Cost equal what? Set um price times rate divided by a hundred. Excellent. Excellent. And that is that is that is pretty much it. 
they say, oh, simple, these are, these, these are the problems, these are the things that people say difficult, and it's not difficult. It's just a matter of getting the foundation, getting the right foundation, and when you practice it, it becomes very easy. Bear in mind, this is the hardest part of IT. You see, see if you can master this, you're on the way to getting a one or a distinction, right? So the important thing is to practice this. So after this, when we finish this class, I'm going to send you the, the file with the MT1s and you know, practice them, drop them in, in the notebooks and whatever the case is, make sure you understand them. All right, I want the one more. Let's do two more. That's the one to kind of use your hand. Try this one. Try this one. Just as simple as it looks. Um, sir, calculate our, we're supposed to use area. It's telling you to calculate the area, so that you're going to use. Yes, sir, area. Right. All right, what is the formula for, for this now? For you calculate the area. Sir, I'm going to say the height. Height. Sorry, give me a second. I didn't look. Sir, I'm going to ask um, this times height. Sir, it depends on the triangle. Height sir. times length times width. No, if you calculate the area triangle, it's half base times height. So half... Half the standard height. Right, so look here. I'm gonna do the quiet. You see this? This you couldn't write this as a pseudo code and give because this should have been incorrect. Right? Because the computer never understand what this symbol for a fraction is. So instead of writing one over two for a fraction, what would I put for the decimal? Zero point five. 0 0.5. So half base times height. So this is the area for the triangle. So, right. So you would input Yeah, my character arm um, something, sir. Go ahead. Where you get the zero? Where you get the half? A while ago? Yes, sir. Yes, the yeah. it's an automatic feature where, where Microsoft have. So if you say one by two like that, once you press the space, you change it. No, sir, not that, sir. Me no, me sir, and it's yes, sir. sir. It's a base, what sir. We don't know why you um, put off. For the area? Yes, sir. Um, no, sir, for the base, we don't get why you use um off. Because I say check, I say check area of triangle. Oh, yes, okay, half sir. Half-base times height. The half-base times height. Yeah, but, but as I said, we can't, we can't say half like that. So that's why we put the 0.5. Yes, yeah, sir. Sir, we get that, sir. But we say um, we don't get why you use it. Why me? And I mean, so like, could I, why we couldn't use any other number? Because that's the formula for a triangle. That's the formula for the era. That is the universal formula for finding the era of a triangle. So it's not me. Okay, it's not sir. me you say it. It's, it's Matt say it. Okay, sir. No, I understand. Yes, I am just following. Good. So we get that. Yes, sir. All right. So we want to wrap up. Wrap up. No, we don't want to overdo it and stress out on a on a on a brain like on a can you know Sunday dinner. So we're going to wrap up with looking at another era. So we're going to touch on our next era. But the next era is a very important part. And that's the part that we're most likely to see in, well, just as likely 
So you will see they might ask to write a small pseudo code like this. You may or may not get IPO charts. But you are going get something called a trace table. All right? So I'm going to close this and I'm going to open the next thing. And we're going to look at a few trace tables. And I'm not going to get too in-depth in, in it right now. But we're just going to look at a few. We're just going to do a couple of these. I say, as I do each one, you can screenshot it and take a picture of it to make sure that you have it. Just going to do about four or five of these quick, because I'm kind of short. All right, so this is a trace table, right? The question says, complete the following trace table for the algorithm. A trace table keeps a track of all the values for your variables, because what we have done so far are some pretty short programs. But when you realize that I will start with some longer codes, you can realize that the value for a variable can change. So a, val a value for a variable can start off as 1, and then it change to 10, then it change to 15, or whatever, depending on what the code is saying. Right? So what we want is we want to create a trace table to track the value for variables as they change throughout the program. Right? So we're going to do a simple one here. So, so Normally, you might not get this table part in the in the in the question. They will just give you this the question alone, right? And from the question, you're going to look for the variable. So I know that a is a variable, b is a variable, sum is a variable, diff, mul, and div. I know that all of these are variables. So I just put them in the table over here, so going across. All right, that's basically what I did. Right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to write down the value for each variable as I go through. So right here, so I have six steps. I have numbered it one to six for past papers. And as we go forward, you're not going to see the steps here. So the numbers, but just put them here so because we're just starting. Normally, you wouldn't see the numbers here, so you don't see it like this as is. But we'll put the steps so that we know where we are. As we get more experience, we realize that so we don't need that. We can just look at it and know where we are. Right? So we start now from step one to six. And then we go through this sequentially, meaning that we start at one, then we do two, then we do three, four, five, six. When that we go from one to three and then come back to two, because then we're getting out of sequence. We have to stay in sequence, top to bottom, going down. Right? So we start off as A, B14. Are you doing that? A is 14. B is 7. And then you see now they start assigning some values here. So, so you see now sum is equal to A plus B. So sum is equal to A plus B. So what is the value for sum now? Um, 21. 21. Diff is equal to A minus B. So A minus B is what? 7. Mol is equal to A times B. So A times B is what? 7 times 14 is what? 7 times 14? Um, 98. 98. And div, A divided by V. B, A divided by B is what? 2. 2, two sir. Two. 2. So this will be the final result for the trace table. 
right? So once we run through steps one to step six, we will end up with these values as our, as our, in our trace table. So this is basically what we're going to be doing. And we're, going, we're just going to take it a step further as we go. So look at this, take a quick picture of this, and we're going to move to the next one. So take, a, take five seconds, take a picture, our screenshot, and we'll move to the next one. All right, number two now. All right, again, I run through this and I realize that I'm using all X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z are all the variables that I'm using. There are no other variables anywhere in here, so. All right? Ready? All right, so we're starting off with step one, where X is one. Step two, y is two. Next one, z, z three. Is three. Good. Here's so now, z is equal to z plus x. Z is equal to z plus x. Z plus x is what? Four. Z is three plus x. Is um, one. So z now becomes four. 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 Good. Here's so now, x is equal to z minus x. So x is now equal to z, which is 4, minus x, which is 1. So z is now 1. 3. X, three. X, no, x is 3. Right? So bear in mind now, z was 3 before, then it changed to 4. So right here, so when I say z minus x, it's referring to 4 minus 1, which is 3. All right. The next one says y equal z plus y. Z plus y. So y becomes 6. Mm -hmm. We're well, here so now where z is equal to y minus z. Z 2 is equal to y minus z. Y, which is 6, minus z, which is 4. So two. Z becomes so two. 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 And finally, Y is equal to Y minus X minus Z. So Y, which is six, minus X, which is three, minus Z. So that leaves what? One. 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 Good. So when this is finished, the final value for X is three. The final value for Y is one and the final value for z is two okay. so this is what a trace table is you run to a trace table the values will change and then the final value that you have at the end those are what remains so this is basically what we're doing here so for a trace table let me give you our next one to see how well you can manage it all right try this one So I must do it in our book? Yes, ma'am. Do it in the same time and WhatsApp it to me. Thank you. 
So as you do this one, you send me, send me the, the WhatsApp. So I know if it's correct. Sure, send a mind, sir. Mm hmm Soon look at it. Yes, Onisia. No, Okani, you're going wrong somewhere, I said. I'm not sure where you're going wrong. All right, so let's look through it. So x equal 1, y equal 2, z equal 3. Then we get to here. x is equal to x plus y. So x plus y. So x is now 3. y is equal to x times y. x, which is 3, times y. So y becomes 6. Mm -hmm. Z is equal to X plus Y. X plus Y, 6 plus 3. So Z becomes what? Nine. Nine. All right. X is equal to X plus Y. X plus Y. So X now becomes 9. Nine y is equal to X times Y. X times Y is what? X times Y is what? Mercy. X times um, Y? 54. 54. 54. Good. Good. So Jada, check back yours. Look at where you went wrong. That's your own mindset. So the chase. No, okay, man. Look on what me have your saying so you went wrong, all right? So look at this one. Look at someone have some difficulty with this one. So let me just beat back so that you can get it. So I just mix, let me mix up my something, sir. Yeah, well, mix up, mix up. I got class, I agree. I make the difference between a pass and a fear. Okay, I miss no catch with this, you know. So we have x equal y, y equal two, sorry, x equal one, y equal two, and z equal three. All right. So we have x equal x plus y, x equal x plus y. So x plus y is three. This x plus y. 1 plus 2 is 3. y is equal to x times y. So x times y is 6, is 3 times 2. So that is, so y is now 6. z is equal to x plus y. z equal to x plus y. x plus y, 3 plus 6. So that is now 9 x is equal to x plus y, x plus y, 3 plus 6, so x is now equal to 9, and y is equal to 
x times y, x times y, 9 times 6, 4. So you end up with 9, 4, 9. Good. We reach 3 o'clock, so let me just do one more and then we can finish for today. All right, let's look at this one. So this one has what's called an if statement. Thing. So let's look at this one. This one about if statement, right? Where you have an if statement is one statement, right? But it has two parts. First of all, it have this part, which is called the criteria in the if statement. So it's say if t minus three, t minus three here, so is a criteria, meaning it can be true or it can be false. So if it's a t, if t minus three. So I then here so then n equal five else n equal four. So after the n, what happens after the n if it's true? And what happens after the else is if it's false. This is not a part of the program I'm not sure. Right? So if t less if t greater than three, this is the criteria. If t is greater than three, then it will do this if it's true, or it will do this if it's false. If this statement is true, it's going to n equal five. If this statement is true, false, it's going to n equal four. Right? So based on what is in the criteria. The computer will do one out of the two of them. You won't do two of them. It will either do the one if it's true or the one if it's false. So let's try it and see. Where it says t is equal to three, and p is equal to two, then the criteria asks if t greater than three. So looking at this, is t greater than three? No, sir. T is not greater than three. three it's, it is actually the same. That means that this statement here, so is false. So once it's false, it will do the false part here, so so n will now be equal to four. And s is equal to n plus p. N plus p is six times t is eight. Yeah? Yes, sir. Eight is. You get that? Let me do that again. Just to make sure that I'm working. I don't need to forget this part. We see that t is three. T equal to three. P equal to two. Right? Based on this if statement here, so we're treating this if statement here, so as one. Yeah, that is that. Don't use that. We're treating this if statement here, so as one statement. Understand? So if if the criteria here, so here, if that criteria, these are the determining factor. This is what makes the difference. The criteria. So if this criteria is true, it will do what immediately follows with them. If it is false, it will do what immediately follows for else. So in this case, it will do this if the criteria in red is true, or it will do this if the criteria in red is false. So based on the criteria here, we can check it. If t greater than three, and we look over here, so for the value, is t greater than three? We say that t is three years old. So that's like asking, is three greater than three? 
Three is not greater than three. Three is equal to three. So the statement is false. So because this criteria is false, it can't do the true part. It has to do the false part. Right? So n is now equal to four. So n is now equal to four. So S, so the end if, so it means so the if part finish right here, so the end if. So we'll just continue normally. S is equal to N plus P. Mm -hmm. N plus P is 6 times T. Times 3. Which is 18. So this will be your answer. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. All right. So I feel like. Sir, I'll... can I go back, please? Okay, so I'm deep out as a printer. Mm. Let me go over. Who's the one who's going right again? No, sir. I did say go over, sir. I said, no, I want to take part of the Somebody said go over. They don't have to go over. So let me go over it again. So we'll come back to the print. All right. So we're saying that in an if statement, once you have an if statement, right, the way to treat it, We need to identify it by itself. But when you when you, when you get this kind of part of your so you can just circle it so that you know that you have to treat this as one statement. So you're not going to do this and then do this after. You're only going to do one out of the two of them. You're going to either do what is above the else or what is below the else. What is above the else is if it's true. Put that in a green. And what is below the S is if it's false. Okay, I'll put that in our next color. Good. So it's all det determined based on the statement right here, sir. The criteria. So if T is greater than 3, that is the question. If T is greater than 3, you see that? T is 3 here, so, and P is 2. So if T greater than 3, is T greater than 3? That is the question you're asking. Is 3 greater than 3, basically? Is 3 greater than 3? That is why you're asking, because T here, so, is 3. So is 3 greater than 3? No, it is not. It is equal to 3. So that means that this statement is false. So once it is false, we do the false part right here, so which is n equal four, right? If it was the other way around, if it is say, if it said that if t equal to three, then it will be true, and then n will be equal to five. But that's not what it's asking. It's asking if it's greater than it, which is false. So n is now equal to four. So n becomes four right here. So the next part of the statement says, um, s is equal to, n plus p, n plus p, which is 4 plus 2 is 6, times t, which is 3. So that makes s 80. And then the last part of it says print. So you can do this in one of the two ways. You can put in an next column here, so that is named called print. And it says print s, so you print 18, or you can write it below the you can write it below the table and you can say print Alright, and that will be the answer for that. Get that? So be bear in mind that these are we we'll start with CXC type questions here, so so once you are understanding this, then it means that you are understanding exactly what you need to do when you're going to CXC, all right? So you will find. I'm going to put some other questions together on a worksheet, and I will send it out by tonight. Not right now, probably by tonight I will do it. But for this class, I think it will be very productive. I see that some people understanding, some people who normally even talk like on this is that is answering questions. So that is a huge step, I mean, appreciate that. She was not a maturity. She not a little laugh, laugh, or something like that. She used to go out one time. She actually, I think it's serious now. So that is good. So some people answering and trying, which is good. Um, 
other people are trying again, Princess and other people or Connie, which is good. So everybody should get full of commendations for today's efforts. All right. Ensure that you practice this. When you get when you screenshot them, I'm gonna tell you for right down. Go back and practice them after. All right. As I said, it's coming like maths. You're going to understand it now. And if you wait one or two days, little by little, you start forgetting pieces to the forget the whole thing. You have to practice it. You practice it now when you come off right. A little bit later in the evening, you practice it. Make sure you're understanding it. So later in the night, when I send the next worksheet part, you can just jump straight through it and you won't have any problems. All right. So on that note, I'm going to end the recording and all of that. And I will say, y'all have a good day and look out for the, for the work later. All right. Take care.